For the first Sunday in March, you've found the Georgia Gang. Topping our agenda today, transit ideas surge throughout the state. Mayor Bottoms goes to Buckhead and met mixed reviews. And out of the state capitol, social issues are popping to the front. Some of the stories up for grabs on the Georgia Gang. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia Gang starts now. And good morning, we're glad you could be with us. We find at the state capitol suddenly ideas about transit, a, a word that was never really discussed much under the Gold Dome in previous years. Now there are ideas everywhere. The most immediate, of course, is the vote in Gwinnett County March 19th on whether to join MARTA. And our Lori Geary leads us off with that story. Well, Dick, polls open for early voters this week in Gwinnett County. The elections director predicts turnout could be twice as large as a typical special election because of the high interest in the martyr referendum. I think they tried to tried to make a case for this, but it seems like they're trying to shove it down people's throats to tell you the truth. Jim Ashenfelter was one of about two dozen Gwinnett County voters who showed up at this Lilburn Town Hall meeting on the martyr referendum. He says he'll be voting no. Supporters, though, say this is one of the most important decisions voters will make about the future of Gwinnett County. It's growing, and the, tr the time that you sit in traffic to just get downtown has taken, at least me when I go down here, at least an hour and a half. Gwinnett County and MARTA reps laid out the plan on how the one cent sales tax will be used. Heavy rail will extend from Doraville to I-85 and Jimmy Carter. The plans also add 50 miles of bus rapid transit, known as a train on wheels with dedicated lanes between Norcross and the Infinite Energy Center. It also expands Gwinnett's local bus service and express routes. People all over Gwinnett are going to get significantly increased access to rapid bus transit and to local express bus routes, new park and ride. And there's also a lot of road improvements to major corridors where there are current bottlenecks. But Lilburn Councilman Eddie Price says he's heard concerns from his constituents. Well, the concern of some people using this transit to come out and commit crimes and then go back uh, or crimes being committed on the, on the rail system. The official voting day is March 19th, and as Theron and I have told you, we are heavily involved in the Go Gwinnett campaign because we really feel like this is a turning point for Gwinnett County and talk about high paying jobs. And we know because the referendum is on March 19th, it's an uphill battle. Um, we know according to the polling that white Republicans, white older Republicans are against, um, a lot of them are against this referendum. And so they're, they're the ones showing up to the polls, but we do have some breaking news. And the fact that former um, governor, a Republican, Governor Deal, has come out in favor of the referendum. And he's, you know, credited for making Georgia the number one place to do business for several years. And he says um, whenever he was meeting with CEOs, two questions came to mind. One, do they have transit? And two, how close are they to Hartsfield-Jackson? So this is really about bringing high-paying jobs and keeping them there in Gwinnett County. But I think the question, uh, thank you, Lori, really is about... Uh, is about that voter turnout. And uh, Theron, how do you get those millennials out in a special election? I see that there's a lot of legwork You're using paid canvassers, as Democrats do, uh, which is to pay people to, who don't have jobs to go around and knock on doors and find people. Uh, it's a technique the Democrats are getting quite good at, which I think has very little to do with representative democracy, but that's my own thought. How do you get those millennials out besides paying them? Well, some of those paid canvassers actually do work. They have full-time jobs. Many men and women actually come in the evenings once they get off uh, work to do the paid canvass. But look, you see a trend that we've seen in Gwinnett for a long time. Usually during the first week of early voting, you have a more seasoned audience of voters who actually vote early and to usually tend uh, trends towards Republicans. But as we saw towards the end of the week, we saw more of those uh, independent voters, which a lot of people in Gwinnett uh, consider themselves independent, but you also some of the uh, Democratic voters coming on as well. So. The, the main thing is, is just to inform people that there's an election going on. That's number one. Number two, give them an opportunity, which I got to commend Chairwoman Charlotte Nash and other county officials who have gone around the county to inform and educate the voters. And then a lot of homeowners associations are having meetings to just give people the information. Now it's our job to make sure that our people turn out uh, once informed, educated to make sure they vote. Phil, is it a good deal? Well, let me give a contrarian view. I think there's uh, two schools of thought that are very sincere. Transportation can be very complex. We've talked uh, ad infinitum on a regional approach, which I think 
that we all probably agree here on the panel. I think two things, though, if I lived in Gwinnett County, I would be concerned about which is a more flexible way to go in dealing with congestion and with the future planning for the five or ten years, which we all are concerned about. I'm a big believer, in, and regular viewers have heard me on this, uh, uh, in buses. I think there's more flexibility right. because we're talking about, uh, in this referendum, extending a MARTA rail line uh, right up to I-85 and the Jimmy Carter Boulevard, which, of course, is congested. I think, and you and I, Theron, have talked about how great the Super Bowl went with mm -hmm. the flexibility that MARTA displayed with buses. We already have the infrastructure there, and you can move things around. In, in, in the Com Cobb County actually had a contract with MARTA to help flexibility and get people yeah. in parking places. Once a rail line is there, you can't move a rail line. Yeah, but and one so of the I, that, that's where I think it's a real problem. And, and secondly, the taxpayers are on the hook. Uh, it is a hike in the sales tax. What if that doesn't cover? the expense of this well, project. Well, two quick answers, I'll go backwards. So the whole taxpayer um, uh, question is one that's fair, Phil, but I think that you will see that 30 plus percent of the money that will be paid into funding the one penny sales tax will come from people outside of Gwinnett. So this won't fall on the backs of all people who live in Gwinnett. And then the second thing is uh, there, were, there is a bus rapid transit component to this. Yeah. And so I want people, our viewers well, to let know. Me, let, me, let me interrupt you gently on But that. that's not the main component. There's bus rapid transit and there are lots of new bus routes. There's almost no rail. If you're joining MARTA, if, you, if you're in Gwinnett and you now want to join MARTA, you're getting rail to Jimmy Carter Boulevard. Well, bus rapid What's that, transit a mile is, and a half? is like a train on, wait, on wheels, and there's 50 well, miles of it I'm all for coming. BRT. Right. Well, okay. well, there's I'm 50 totally. miles of it in this referendum. But it's a proposal. huge price to pay to get a rail line just to Jimmy Carter Boulevard in Norcross. That's, well, that's a big yeah, price. Well, that's why they should have joined in the first place. <laughs> In 1975, whenever right. it was, the first referendum, but they didn't do it. But let me let me throw this out. Um, you know, in, in DeKalb County and in Fulton County, we've had state Department of Transportation projects yeah. that have dealt with congestion and infrastructure and things like that. A lot of the uh, Gwinnett folks who plan to vote no make the point, well, wait a minute. Couldn't we just wait one more year? The DOT does have plans for Gwinnett County. Shouldn't we at least wait a year well, to see? So we yeah. won't be on the hook. Have the state pay well, for it. Well, what you remember, Phil, is that there was an attempt for this to be on the November ballot, right? right. And you, you talked about this. Um, voters would have an opportunity then in November, but I think some Republicans, not all, kind of pushed back on that and wanted to delay it because they were afraid that they were going to lose Gwinnett County and turnout was going to be high. Well, we saw what happened. I mean, Stacey Abrams they won by 14 percent there. But another thing that's come up, too, and real quick to the no voters, there's been a lot of conversation, a lot of myths about the fiscal responsibility of Martin. I just want to read some stats to you that right now, two hundred and four million dollars is in the reserves at Marta. So this whole thing about Marta not being fiscally responsible to manage the money is just basically false. And this is in a nine, $981.5 million 2019 budget. <coughs> And then they have had a budget surplus for six years straight. So when Keith Parker arrived back in 2012, we remember that one of the first things that he did, he came out and talked about how MARTA was basically on the verge of being insolvent. So since his leadership and now Jeff Parker, MARTA is a physically con conservatively run organization. Yeah, 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 that I, has don't, a I don't disagree. It's I a lot jump better. In. It's a lot better. The <clears throat> point is, do Gwinnett Countyans want to pay for rail that you can't move? And in 10 years, we went to a smart city program mm -hmm. just last week. Is that being smart for city growth? If, if, if the rail went to the new cricket stadium, at used to be what used to be going at Play Small. Mm. I might agree with it. But, uh. <laughs> well, yeah, but the thing is, the rail is going to connect with the rail that's already here and get you to the airport sure. in 15 minutes, and that's the whole and point. And it's going to reduce the amount of time that you're in traffic. We're out of time. Is big time. We should big mention, by the way, that in Cobb County, the twin to Gwinnett on the other side, they're lock, uh, the uh, commission chairman is talking about a transit vote in 2020, hmm. but we're not sure if it's even going to be countywide. So we just want to mention that. Well, let me just do, let me just do a quick footnote on that one. I think Cobb County actually is doing the right thing because you have just like we're talking about Gwinnett County, you have to plan these things out for the future. There's not enough time to draw a map. There's not enough time to complete the process. You've got to get the local legislative delegation to agree with the county well, commission. All that. And so I don't criticize it was 2022. that. I, they're talking about 2022 because Correct. they already have a splost on the ballot in 2020. 2020 that's, that's right. right. Yes. Thank you. And yeah. they're also already yeah. contracting with MARTA. So I don't get it. I mean, it's not a well, problem. Well, the question right? is whether the whole county is going to vote. We're just a part of the Special county. District. I think that's the real District. question in Cobb. Okay. And finally, real quickly, because uh, I don't think it'll go anywhere, there's a proposal in the General Assembly to tax our Uber, Lyft, and any rideshare <laughs> uh, call cars for hire, limos, I guess, mm -hmm. 50 cent tax that would extend transit throughout the rest of the state. <laughs> 
We think no that's going to happen. <laughs> no new taxes. That's, that should die on the vine. And it's introduced by Republicans. Yeah. Well, you know, mm -hmm. not all Republicans are conservatives, Dick. You know that. Yeah, but well, these are out there from North Georgia. Well, you know what? <laughs> we have to whip them into line, don't we? <laughs> all right, we got to get out. Well, when we come back, Mayor Bottoms goes to Buckhead, and the uh, reaction is pretty interesting. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia Gang? Email them at georgiagang at foxtv.com. We turn now to the city of Atlanta, and in particular Buckhead, where crime has been a major concern for the last couple of years. It's highly visible. <clears throat> and Mayor Bottoms finally went to Buckhead, to the Atlanta History Center to be exact, to listen to people's concerns. And she said that uh, she's very familiar with crime. I've shared before, I've been the victim of a slider crime. Um, I unfortunately had a nephew who was murdered in our city uh, just a few years ago. So I'm not a stranger to what crime feels like and the impact that it has on each of us. So I guess um, she has done what the folks of Buck had wanted. Laura, you've, you've pressed on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted her to come to Buckhead. She did. The reaction was mixed. Uh, but actually, crime is down for the first part of the year. It is. And I mean, I applaud Mayor Bottoms. I mean, she kind of went into the lion's den, den here. I mean, she knew that a lot of these voters had voted for her opponent. And so um, very courageous also in the way that she handled this town hall meeting. I mean, she took questions from the audience. She had no cards written down. And I think a majority of the audience really liked what Chief Shields had to say, which was it's not all on the Atlanta Police Department. The Fulton County um, courts have a lot to do with this and letting out some of these repeat offenders. Uh, th <clears throat> Theron, th that is the argument that is increasingly being heard, that the judges are too lenient. Yeah. <clears throat> Perhaps they don't have the facts. They're not, uh, it's a, a turnstile justice. Well, well, I attended a whole town hall meeting, and I would say it wasn't just mixed. I think the majority of the people who were in attendance supported Mayor Bottoms. If they didn't come in supporting her in the beginning, I think they definitely left feeling better about the plan moving forward. As Lori just pointed out, everyone had an opportunity to ask questions, but uh, and, and they got their questions answered. But one of the things that Chief Shields did very, very masterfully is that she turned a lot of the attention to really two uh, sectors of Fulton County government. She aimed at the district attorney, and she also aimed at Chief Magistrate Judge Cassandra Kirk. So I've actually talked to both of them. So I want to break some news um, that um, on Friday, uh, District Attorney Paul Howard sent a letter basically requesting a policy change saying that these magistrate court judges who have repeat offenders, and I want to make sure it's four offenses, repeat offenders, crimes of violence, sex offenses, uh, and people who are currently on probation. If the district attorney, the prosecutor, recommends that this individual does not uh, receive bond, then he would suggest that they actually elevate this particular cases on those four offenses to a superior court judge. Now, Chief Magistrate Judge Cassandra Kirk, who's a friend, who's a Leadership Atlanta classmate of mine, I talked to her this week, and one of the things that she told me is that, listen, when making those decisions, these judges do not have a criminal background history, mm -hmm. which Chief Shields pointed out, That's amazing. and also don't have the police report. But, she, but one of the things she said is, she said it's not the magistrate court judge's responsibility to investigate the case. It's left up to the state and the county working in concert to make sure that that information <coughs> is there. And then one of the things that Paul Howard also said is that he would encourage the Atlanta Police Department to actually turn over the full evidence to the prosecutors so they can have all the reports in front of them when they're in these, involved in these cases. Uh, Alexis, have we got a problem, an inherent philosophical problem here? Mm -hmm. We have a criminal justice reform issue on the table. Mm -hmm. We have a mayor in Keisha Lance Bottoms who wants to do away with cash bond. Mm -hmm. And we get a lot of criminals who need to be behind bars. Mm -hmm. To me, that seems like a setup for failure. I don't think so, especially after hearing that the judges don't even have any information on these cases. I think what needs to be fixed is that system of turning over the information in the background on these people who've been arrested so that the judge can make an informed decision rather than just looking at the person who came in with their auntie and the auntie said, I'll take care of them, I'll make sure they don't do anything, and they let them go. 
but that's not good enough. And, and another thing well, that Chief, I, I, I want to push back on well, well, uh, Chief Magistrate. <laughs> no, you, you've been filibustering. I want to push back. No, on, I'm just on, giving uh, facts. I'm breaking news. Kirk. Something well, that, well, you don't want you know, me to talk. To do you you don't want me to talk. No, I just want to add All one right, I'm, No, I'm going to talk about Cassandra Kirk because I'm going to take the police side of this thing. Okay. The police disagree. Now, maybe there are some cases where you don't have a rap sheet a mile long, but I've talked to police and they say that the magistrate, chief magistrate, needs to order those other magistrate judges to uh, to, to follow the rules don't and don't agree. just don't let don't them out on the street. So right. that's the other side I of the agree. story and, and so, here. So did but I will say this, I've been highly critical of Chief Shields, but I'm going to praise her on that. She said what I've been saying on this show for two years, that policing has been terrible in the Buckhead business section of Atlanta. That's changed. Yes, Lori, I'm glad to see those, <coughs> those statistics for the first two months uh, to, to have better policing. But I do think that, uh, watch these judges. Judges. I like the fact that this Buckhead anti-crime group is kind of picking a judge so they can go in. The, and you should be in favor of this. Uh, no, I talked, to, I talked to Amber Connor, and, and, and they, so they I told think, her. I think write we need to watch these responded. judges because Dick, you're right. There's been far too much permissiveness, and I'll be interested to see how this Howard. Well, the thing, thing goes. I was going to say when Phil wouldn't let me actually help amplify his go ahead, point go ahead. was it's that I think. Panel, you know, it's but no, no. But I think no. Stop, Dick. I think the thing that I was going to say is is that I asked Chief Judge Kirk that same question: Would she be willing to sit down? and basically come up with a collective policy with APD. And what I was going to say is that she said that she has not heard directly from Chief Shields. And so I asked Chief Shields now on the show to call Chief Judge Kirk, or maybe she called her, but the two of them need to get together. Yes. To your point, Dick, because therein lies, I think, the loophole that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll accept that. We pick up the but phone, I think, too. I think it's going to be really shocking for a lot of people to hear that these judges don't have the full don't have any records That's of these folks. I want to be yeah, clear. I, I don't buy that argument well, all I, the time. But it, it came up in the town hall, but I think now, you know, next week maybe we'll report back and we can clear the record, but I think if they have the report, they don't have enough to basically make these decisions. Maybe all the records were uh, lost in the uh, computer ransomware uh, hack no, at City there. Hall last they're year. Maybe they, maybe they don't have anything, you know? Uh -huh. Who knows? All right, we didn't have time for much more local news, but uh, when we return, we're going to get back to the General Assembly and the big budget is passing without a lot of controversy. Stay with us. Join the discussion on the Georgia Gang Facebook page and watch past episodes on the Georgia Gang YouTube channel. There's a lot happening at the General Assembly. A lot of it seems, lots of little subjects stirring some emotion, but I'm not sure how much of it's real. One thing that is real is the budget, Lori. Mm -hmm. The big budget has uh, emerged from the House, I guess. Doesn't seem to be much controversy about it, except the teacher pay raise won't be the 5% or the 3%. Be slightly less than that. Well, it's 5,000 or 3,000. <coughs> and it was 5% um, yes, or 3%. But I think even the teachers groups were okay with this because they, they're going to pay a little bit less than $3,000. They're going to get paid a little bit less than $3,000. It's like a couple hundred dollars because they want to give also equal raises to the folks also on the front lines. The, psycho the school psychologists, the counselors um, will also be getting a pay raise. And, and these folks work hand in hand with the teachers as well. Yeah, and that, so. Uh, I, yeah, I don't hear anybody. Sound uh -huh. good. It's, I mean, it's like he's bailing on his campaign promise. Well, he said, Governor Kemp, in all fairness, said this <coughs> is the first down payment that we probably couldn't do everything at once because of the budget. Taxes last year. Well, he called it a down payment. <laughs> it's a phase in. Nothing, nothing unusual about that. But it is when the, when the three thousand becomes the twenty seven twenty five, you wonder what's next. But anyway, yeah. uh, it, it's moving. The Netflix tax is not going to happen, which was supposed to. Uh, tax Netflix users to pay for rural broadband. Uh, but all of a sudden, these social, well, wait, one other non-social. The Atlanta airport bill oh, has yes. moved out of a committee. Uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms has uh, vowed to fight it to death, to her death, I guess. But uh, <laughs> no, I don't, to, I don't think death. this is the year for the uh, for the proper step of creating an airport authority. It's all in horse trading at the very end. The, uh, the Senate will uh, pass the bill and uh, it'll go to the House. The House wants some things, the Senate wants some things. I've learned never say never when it comes to day 40 of this legislature. All right. Well, I just don't think it's gonna happen. You think it's too divisive? Yeah, and it's too complicated to just do it in one fell swoop. It's gonna take some time if they can do it. But it's the right thing. I don't think so. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I think, and I think what you heard from some state senators at the Capitol and the, and the mayor pushed back and saying that not only was this divisive, I mean, it's just a step backwards. I mean, you know, if you really can't really show that this authority is going to make it more effective and make it, you know, continue to receive the countless awards that it's received, right. it's really baseless. But you praised the World Congress Authority, you've praised the, uh, the Ports Authority, way. and they this is the exact same model, and uh, so I, I think it's going to be, but and it's not that complicated. Citizens, citizens of Atlanta have financed this project from what since 19 when I'm so and it's going from I mean really it's going from one day. political entity to, to another political, political entity right. so I'm not sure if that's one that, the way that probably would have a more cleaner uh, transparent uh, procurement process as opposed to the corrupt practices that go on now we well, have a, uh, in an authority you'd have a buffer you wouldn't have <clears throat> elected officials directly making the decisions now the social issues <clears throat> excuse me uh, a heartbeat bill probably not going to happen but governor Kemp has supported uh, a ban on abortion if Roe v. Wade is overturned, Lori. Uh, for myself, I'm very much pro-life, but I think I could wait till the courts act. Well, I think this is him making good also on a campaign promise that he said he would pass some of the toughest restrictions on abortion um, in the U.S. And so in the case if Roe v. Wade is overturned, then um, there would have to be another vote by the legislature and um, banning almost all abortions, in the, except for the case of incest and rape and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. It's a trigger um, that the Republicans want. I think the Democrats are on very weak ground here with, uh, with the debate in Georgia and nationally. Uh, I think it's shocking that Democrats, not all of course, but that are supporting uh, third trimester and then this, this idiotic governor of Virginia wanting uh, perhaps decisions uh, to, to kill a baby outside of the womb. Uh, I think the Republicans and, and those in the center where you win elections in the center, it's not the left or the right, I think that Democrats are losing ground on this issue. Well, when 43 U.S. senators uh, vote to allow the death of babies after they've been born, it's that's a shocker. called infanticide and it is shocking. Uh, also in the General Assembly, uh, State Senator Marty Harbin of Tyrone has reintroduced RIFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Uh, I, I, I don't sense that anybody really wants to go there, but they're going to go there, aren't they, Theron? Yeah, and it's going to be unproductive. I mean, time and time again, you know, I just don't fundamentally understand. Here it is. Why do you feel that we need a restoration, you know, freedom of uh, whatever it is, RIFA, um, uh, act when we have a federal law that basically gives people in this country religious freedom. I mean, the, rest the, rest the, the story is the court said the states now have to, to do it. And l let me clear up some mythology. Uh, this bill re reflects 95 percent of the federal law. The 120, <coughs> I think it's 20 words at the end of this bill, deals with sovereign immunity in the state because uh, there was a bad state Supreme Court decision that uh, you just can't sue state or entities, which I, I think is a bad decision. So we're trying to get around that. This is for living out someone's faith. It could be Christian faith. It could be another faith. It's to protect public school students or college students like those that I are being disagree. hassled. I disagree because we have a First Amendment and all of these cases that have gone to the courts before have already been settled with the current laws that we have in place. Even the former fire chief of Atlanta, Chief Calvin Cochran, that case has been settled as well. So I just don't think that there's a need for it. Speaker Ralston, I hope he holds true to his belief. He's saying we're not going to revisit this issue. Yeah, I well, agree. Yeah. No, I want it. it you know, I want all of it. But why? <laughs> well, then it's a because the country was it, founded it, it, on it, the it, idea of religious it, it, freedom. It, it, but when we are country, then all eyes are, are on Georgia once again. And do you want Georgia to become an Indiana um, or a North Carolina? Their states are doing fine. Doing I would fine. say this: there's <laughs> there's, there's students like at Gwinnett College that are trying to have uh, their free speech and, and preach their faith, and yet they're being censored. Well, this would protect them. All right, we got to get out. We'll, the, the debate is not going to go away. When we come back, winners and losers. Time now for the week's winners and losers. And we're going to have to talk quickly here to do it, but Darren, go for it. First winner is going to be the Medical College of Georgia. We want to get outside of Atlanta for a change. Um, they have basically introduced a program that will help pay tuition for doctors who want to serve rural areas. So we know a lot about rural health care. want to give them a big shout out. 
Also, the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus Heritage Dinner was this week. Stacey Abrams was a keynote speaker, so definitely want to give a big shout out to the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. And then also, I want to uh, make my losers, all the state senators uh, who um, voted to move this bill for uh, against the airport. I agree with Mayor Bottoms that I think that having a conversation about this airport is not only divisive, it does a disservice to the people of Georgia. Um, we should all come together and look at ways to maintain the good working relationship between the state and the city. Phil. Dick, I'll be quick. I went to the Conservative Political Action Conference this week. I know you all are shocked at that. But anyhow, I, uh, my, my winner, and you won't like this, uh, Alexis, is my favorite button, Socialism Sucks. And I want to talk about the losers are going to be these Democrats in Georgia that are for big government control and, and big spending. My winners are those Democrats that are going to push back and my other button was capitalism cures. And so I'm for the Democrats that are opposed to socialism along with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I got that. Yeah. Yeah. Socialism bad, capitalism good. Very good. Go ahead, Laura. I have no buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of our Facebook viewers this week were weighing in on Michael Cohen, whether they thought he was a winner or a loser. Also, Donald Trump um, and his trip overseas. But I think my winner is definitely um, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms for holding this town hall meeting and also. Chief Shields, you know, for really answering the questions and, and, and getting answers to a lot of the, the people that they, they, they wanted. Fair enough. Alexis? I will ditto that for the mayor and the chief, but I'd also like to take a point of personal privilege and congratulate AG Rhodes Re Health and Rehab. They were named among the top 20 large employers, best places to work. So congratulations to them, and they've taken good care of me. Yeah, they have. They have. <laughs> so I thank the Deke uh, for that's a point of personal privilege that's allowed. Yes. Thank you. All right. But it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, it's not just me. And the people who work there are really wonderful. Everybody's great. Thank well, you. I'll be quick uh, because I have to be. Uh, I don't like uh, Bryce Harper going to the Phillies. It makes the Braves job tougher, I think. Uh, and I hated the Academy Awards because it wasn't about America. See you next week on the Georgia Game. What the heck? What? <laughs> The opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the panelists appearing in this program. 